everybody, this is Kelly. Welcome back to another episode of Ask a Therapist. Today we're going to be talking about tactics that abusers use. According to the dictionary, abuse as a noun is defined very simply as the improper use of something. So you can abuse lots of different things. You can abuse alcohol. You can abuse drugs. You can abuse your freedom to do certain things. It's an improper use of something. In general, when we talk about abusers, we are talking about people who abuse power. There are lots of people in our lives that have power over us. In many cases, people have their power removed from them against their will societal structures, emotional structures. There are so many different ways that people can have power removed from them with no knowledge of their own. Or even if you say no, or even if you try to fight it, power is removed from you anyway. But initially, I want to talk to you about the abuse of power, the tactics that those abusing power over you use. And maybe if we've got some time, we'll get into how you can stop that. Otherwise, that'll have to be another video. Tactic number one, gaslighting. Gaslighting is when you intentionally manipulate a situation in order to make someone feel as though they are inappropriate or they are crazy. If you want to understand a little bit better how that's used in churches especially, I have a video which I'll link right here, but I want to talk about a bigger picture gaslighting and I want to talk about the gaslighting that can happen often between genders. I cannot explain to you the number of times in my life where I have had men who think that they're funny or think that they're poking fun at something, and then when I get upset, when I finally have had enough and I tell them to stop and I get upset, they're like, Oh, I don't know what you're getting so upset about. Oh, I'm just kidding around. You don't have to be so emotional about it. First of all, don't ever tell anybody that they're too emotional about something. If there is somebody whose emotions take over every aspect of their lives and they come to you and ask you about it, or you're, you know, a licensed professional in the field, then maybe you can say, hey, maybe your emotions are taking too much control. Otherwise, do not insult the way someone uses their emotions to cover up your own guilt about being a jerk. That's number one. If you have had that happen to you, you know the frustration. Because it's like, yeah, none of the things that you necessarily said are all that bad. And maybe there's other people around too who didn't get so emotionally impacted by it, so they don't see the big deal either. But by the time you're upset, you then have to call into question the reason that you got upset. And if you come back at them with a conversation about, well, you said this, this, and this, they're like, well, I'm just joking. Brushing off the validity of someone's emotions because you didn't see it or you feel guilty or you're just a big jerk is not okay. That's an abuse of power. All right, abuse of power number two, not asking permission. This happens more in formal structures, in um, boss situations or situations where someone is even on an equal plane, they might have seniority over you. It's the assumption that they will, that you will do what they have told you to do simply because they have seniority or because they're in charge of you or I don't know, because they woke up on Tuesday and felt really powerful. When we leave stuff out of explaining things, when we forget to tell somebody about a detail of something that would be important to them, when we manipulate a situation in order to make someone else do something we want them to do, that's an abuse of power. It's not okay. People deserve the right to hear all of the information before they decide on something. Our next abuse of power is what kicked off this video in the first place. The reason that I felt it was so important to do this video, recently a very well-known member of our legislative body did an Instagram Live. They told a very powerful story that they did not feel like they could tell. This person is fodder for jerks anyway, for lots of different reasons, and most of them are abuse of power reasons. But this person decided to put this information out there anyway because they felt people needed to hear it, and they were right. They were right. We needed to hear it. The bigger picture of this is the statement they made where they said that those who are rushing to get past it and make it okay, that's the language of abusers. The statements are being made now that we need to move on, that we need to forgive and forget and move forward. And people just need to, that the nation needs to move forward. And 
sometimes those are not incorrect statements. Sometimes those statements come from a really genuine place of wanting healing. When we make the statement that moving on has to happen, we have to be aware of what we are asking those who have been hurt by the situation to get over. For instance, taking it away from the political side of it, I belong to a certain denomination. And that denomination is making some very big decisions right now, some very big moves. And in those big moves, there is a very strong middle of the road, moderate-esque voice that says we need to heal, we need to come back together, we need to move forward together. And my response to that very regularly is, I get that. And I understand you're coming from a genuine place, but you have to understand what you're asking the marginalized people to give up in order for you to feel comfortable. And that's what it comes down to. The call to move on before resolution of a situation is the language of the powerful. It's the language of those who have less to lose. When something tragic happens in our lives, the people around us want us to move forward often before we're ready to. This is why people seek therapists. At least I hope they do. This is why your friends can't just be your therapist or your spouse can't just be your therapist because they have a vested interest in you moving forward and therefore are usually unable to allow you your process. Because here's the thing. If you are not allowed your process to move forward from a traumatic event that has happened in your life, if you are prompted forward before you are ready, you are in reality reacting to their issues with you having discomfort, more so than any discomfort you actually feel. Where that becomes the language of abusers is where people would prefer not to be held accountable for the bad that they have done and instead would prefer those who have been wronged to just get over it and just move forward. When we use the term forgive at someone, when you tell someone who has undergone something, you don't have to think it's traumatic. You get that, right? You don't have to understand the trauma someone's gone through for it to have been trauma. If you are not the one who is traumatized, you do not get to decide what the traumatized person needs. There are many of us who have spent a long time wondering if the things that we feel were wrong in our lives are just our imagination. But the reason that you feel that way, the reason you look back on things and think maybe it wasn't as bad as what I remember, or maybe I shouldn't still feel upset about it, The reason for that is because people in power have told you that you should be over it by now or have told you it's not a big deal or have told you to move on because it's better for everyone if you do. It's better for everyone but you. And that's where you have to make a decision. Are you willing to put everyone else's comfort ahead of your own? And how long are you willing to do that? I recognize that there are things that can be lost when you stand up for yourself. But if it's something that can be lost when you stand up for yourself, why is it something you want in your life anyway? And if it's not something you want in your life anyway, isn't it okay if you lose it by standing up for yourself? Your hurt is valid. The hurt that you remember, the hurt that you still carry, that's valid. Your emotions are valid. The people who tell you they aren't are people who are not invested in your growth. Over the last couple of years, I have made a concentrated effort to stop being friends with people that do things like what I talked about in the beginning of the video. That type of of gaslighting, that type of dismissal of your emotions and your understanding of yourself and the world around you, that's not verbiage that people who are genuinely invested in the betterment of your life, that's not something that they do. That is something that people do when they're not willing to go anywhere outside of their comfort zone to make things okay or to change how they do certain things because it's no longer appropriate. Those are the people that say, what, I can't joke about anything anymore? Or, I I can't compliment a woman anymore? That's it for today. If I could just take a moment of sort of personal privilege, I waited until Friday to publish this because Friday, February 5th is my one year anniversary for this channel. Thank you so much those of you who have subscribed, for those of you who have shared these videos, for those of you who have taken the time to comment or to message me on Twitter, on Instagram, on email. 
I love hearing from you and I would love to hear from you more. So if you have things to say, things you want to share, you just want to shout into the void, I am listening. Please subscribe, hit the like button, share this with your friends. The more this information gets out there, the better we all are. That's it for today. Take care of yourselves and each other and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.